Talk to us about the news of the day with the destruction of that Nord Stream pipeline. How do you think about supplying Europe with gas and the role that you can play as you sort of step into that market? You know, in fact, these two pipelines were already not delivering any gas to Europe for some months. Uh, there was a lot of debates about the dependency of Europe to Russia before. So in fact, fundamentally, it does not change a lot for the supply to the European market today. Uh, we know that, in fact, fundamentally, uh, the, the Europe was over-dependent about Russian gas. So we are working hard to bring uh, gas from outside, LNG, liquefied natural gas. We need to build regas terminals. It will come from the US. It will come from Qatar. Uh, we are working hard on Total Energies to do that. We are the first uh, US LNG exporter last year, so it's well not well known, but uh, long, strong commitment. And I can tell you that uh, for the winter to come, the storage in Europe are full. And I think because with the high price, there is less demand as well, we'll go for the winter in Europe on the gas side. Then we have the electricity side, which is another story. But on the gas side, we are safe. And I, I'm optimistic because we have done really a lot, all the European companies, to fill the storage. And these two pipelines, we are not delivering any gas to Europe. Then will come the question for Europe is more years to come, you know, what do we do? And the only thing is to consider the future of Europe without Russian gas, yeah. taking care of ourselves with regas terminals, taking commitments to the US, to Qatar, to other countries yeah. which can deliver gas. Uh, Monsieur Pione, how hard has it been, just from a technical basis, to extricate yourself from the long-term relationship you did have a, with Russia? How, how hard has it been to pivot and then to ensure that you're building these incredibly important relationships with Qatar and con continuing to dig deep with the US? The reality of a company like Total Energy is that we are in many countries around the world. Of course, we spend time in each country. We are local in each country we work. Having said that, as a CEO of the company, you know, when you have a problem like what happened with Russia, it's more than a problem, it's a drama. You take the consequence. The consequence immediately for me were clear. We'll not invest anymore in any project in that country. Even if we had a quite a unique position in LNG in Russia, we built 10 years, 15 years, but game is over for me, you know, and I, just because I am responsible to allocate capital and clearly it's not safe to invest in that country. So we turn our back to others. It happens to me that I spent three years of my life in Qatar 20 years ago, so I have a lot of personal relationships. Mm. We are working hard to have access to these uh, new trains. Qatar has a giant project, 50 million tons. It's more or less uh, the equivalent of 20% of the market they want to add as a supply. The market requires it. And so we uh, made some good offers, and uh, we are happy to be uh, largest international partners. But you know, Qatar is a long history. We are the first to invest in LNG in Qatar 40 years ago. So it's uh, you know, in, in energy, uh, long-term relationship and vision is just fundamental. Right. And I think it's part of the DNA of a company like uh, Total Energy. Uh, so the consequence of that for me is clear. We have to be careful about geopolitical risks. Mm -hmm. Let's have a large portfolio. Let's spread our risks mm -hmm. in order to be able to rebound. Uh, we believe a lot in LNG. LNG is a very good business. Yes. This why, as well, we invest here in the U.S. In the U.S. In the U.S. By the way, investing so in LNG and renewables. You know, I'm a strange company, so not in oil. In the U.S., you, you have uh, Qatar, Mexico is in there. I think yeah. somewhere as well, Mozambique. You're also still uh, pursuing uh, oil exploration, regular oil exploration. And I know you've started to look at newer markets, particularly in Africa. There's been a lot of talk about whether the new recent finds in Namibia might actually yield something profitable, but we know how difficult it's been to find new sources of oil, or at least that can be actually be produced at a reasonable cost in Africa. Yeah, we drill one yeah. well in Namibia, mm -hmm. so a well, you know, in our industry we know that we need to appraise and to continue. It seems that the discovery might be giant. Uh, let's work. It's oil and gas, probably. So, yes, we are chasing for more oil. You know, uh, we find some oil in Suriname with a U.S. company. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working in Namibia, by the way, also with the Qatari, by the way, we are our partner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in fact, fundamentally, uh, today, uh, we need to find oil to feed, the, to supply the world, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, because, in fact, with the climate change, of course, we have diminished, all our industry has diminished the investments in oil business, probably too low. And today we still have a demand and there is a gap between the supply and demand. So that's our duty for us to continue to find uh, new projects mm. in order to bring them to, to fill the demand. Within the U.S., big oil and big gas have often 
pivoted to returning cash to shareholders because they are having a relationship and shareholders want that return on the investment. You talk a lot about today a special dividend as well. What is that balancing act, returning cash to shareholders, issuing special dividend versus also these investments that you just described? Now we need to do both. You know, this year we'll generate a cash flow around uh, not far from $50 billion, you know. So when you have that, of course, we think with the board to two pillars. We are engaging in a bold strategy to transition from a pure oil and gas business model to add electricity and renewable to be a real top five player in the world by 2030 on that field. So we have decided to increase our investments from uh, uh, up to $18 billion, in particular in new energies. That's one part. But on the other side, uh, we are also to reward our shareholders. I think we are targeting, uh, so I explained this morning to all the US investors, which are quite important, more than 40% of our institutional shareholding are here in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, explain them that we target a cash payout of around 35, 40%. Mm -hmm. To do that, you know, we have an ordinary dividend, we have some buybacks, and we have decided to use special dividend because we are in a field of very high prices. So yeah. we know the appetite of investors, they like buybacks, but they also like shares, uh, cash, I would say. So that's uh, an initiative. So yeah. the result is that last year we distributed 2.64 euro per share, 2.91 dollar per share. This year we'll distribute something like 3.70 uh, dollar per share. So it's quite a big increase. But you know, our shareholders in the oil and gas industry, they are we are, we know that we spend a lot of cash, we invest a lot, $16 billion for me this yeah. year. Uh, we we'll ask them to be patient. There is volatile price. In 2020, nobody was complaining where we faced negative price, you know, and very low results. Today, everybody is chasing us because we make nice results, so it's a normal way to, mm -hmm. to, to retribute. To, I think for me, it's not only by the shareholders, it's a company for investment, it's also yes. employees, employees, which we will reward positively as well. What about the French government? The French government, they want to know in, the, in Europe you have a, a debate about windfall taxes uh, around us, but let me be clear, at the end, there is a principle, a uh, very easy principle. You are taxed in a country on the benefits you do in the country. That's a principle, international principle. Our activity in France is mainly refining. Today we make money. The previous years it was not positive business, I can tell you. We think lost for almost one billion dollar, one billion euro in the last three years. So there is a debate because which is back to that I explained to the government. If you tax us when we make a benefit, you will influence our future investments. You know, we are yeah. a, a, a global company, so maybe I would prefer to invest in the US than in Europe if you tax us more in Europe when we make benefit. Yep. Of course, the energy crisis today is really a political problem because uh, customers, industries, uh, citizens are facing large bills. Yeah. They see us, our companies, making large profits. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the profits that we do, we do that because we produce oil in Angola. Mm -hmm. uh, I produce gas in Qatar. Yeah. And I pay, by the way, a lot of taxes. Total Energies will pay in 2022 almost $30 billion of taxes around the world, $30 billion. Last year it was $15 billion. So in fact, it's the country where we produce, we collect the taxes, and we still collect the taxes because the products are higher. Mm -hmm. in, the in the country where which we are consumers, yeah. and we have only activities which are marginal activities, marginal business. So that's a way to reconcile. But you know, there are, uh, we, we, I believe in the rule of law, in particular in our democracy, we pay a lot of taxes. The average tax, a rate of total energy is around 50% this year. So it's quite high right. compared to many, many industries around the world. 